of ways to help you save money in little and possibly in big ways um, just to you know see how much could we increase your savings if we were able to find an extra hundred dollars here or an extra twenty five dollars there now i think honestly when people are looking at their budget sometimes you're so over your head that you feel like there's no solution or sometimes you think you know what is that little 25 dollars here really going to mean for me in reality finding that money getting it put into savings means a lot you know having some extra savings there for rainy day funds for emergency funds sometimes just because you want to get out and do something having that little bit of a cushion actually provides you with a lot of peace and a lot of comfort uh, you know i know money it has always probably been the number one thing that married folks fight about imagine in your marriage if you had that little bit of comfort that argument wasn't there if that's something that y'all are regularly having discussions over we'll call it that um, you know so if i could get that little bit saved up over time and yes 25 dollars a month can do that um, then that becomes an amazing goal an amazing blessing for your family so that's what i want to hit on tonight if you have questions that are not on topic that is okay with me so ask away whatever your questions are i am glad to pause and answer cvs or whatever it might be but saving money i don't know if it's a topic that can really ever get old it's something that we all should work a little harder at here and there um, trying to see you know how much more can we save this year and make, make, make it a game if that's what we need to do how much more can we put aside in the coming years and you know to give you a big picture here if you were to sit down and play with calculators and see you know what wow we are five years away from being able to retire 10 years away having whatever that motivation is that keeps driving you to live on a budget to live tight even though you may not need to those are good motivations because in the end you've got that extra pot of money uh, that maybe you, you definitely wouldn't have had you not saved up um, but you know just having that mindset as you go through so hello to everyone that's already on with us um, from all over western north carolina uh, karen in florida it's good to see all of you guys bridget in jacksonville so we're going to dive in i would love for y'all to share your tips too so if there are ways that you have managed to find little bits of money in your budget uh, to then save you know that's our goal here um, but if, if there's some category that maybe you realize wow we are way overspending here or we could cut back here sharing those tips with us is huge you know obviously i can only hit so much but y'all have great tips too so stick those in the comments um, wherever you are whether you're on facebook or youtube and just help folks out help folks see ways that you have physically done this uh, and it's worked um, so as we dive in the first big thing that i want to hit on is what your goal is and i i do think that every person needs to have a goal uh, we don't tend to do anything without a goal you don't tend to lose weight well without a goal you don't you know whatever your mindset is and the same applies with our money so if I don't have something that I'm working towards, then I might save money for like a day or two, and then I really start to, to flounder and you give up really quickly. And it's okay to have multiple goals. It's okay to have multiple savings accounts. You know, maybe it's that I wanna hit a point where we are no longer fighting uh, over money. I want us to have that nest egg so that we are not stressed out. Uh, and I wanna know that things are are comfortable for us uh, maybe it's that you want to have a little pot of money to um, be able to go on vacation to be able to have some like dream experiences and we don't have to go super fancy here but you know maybe just a vacation i just want to go somewhere whatever those goals are i would i would encourage you to spell them out and potentially get on the same page uh, so i will you know just to confess here it's not a bad confession my goal uh, is retirement it's to be able to have just that pot of money to where money is not a concern uh, going on throughout the rest of our lives um, so maybe that is what drives you as well so it's being able to save up it's being able to have your kids in college you know whatever we just did that one last week um, but i want you to think about that 
Um, feel free to share that with us too, whatever your goals are. I would love to hear why partic particularly you are eager to save or eager to save more. It's always uh, encouraging to others too, because we kind of realize, oh, we're not alone. We're the, there are multiple people that have the same goal as we do. Another one of my goals is vacation. I love to be able to go on a vacation a year. That's you know, all I'm really wanting uh, this year. It's just looking like camping. That's all we're gonna get to. That's okay. You know, having that little bit of money to where we can take those trips though is huge for my morale. So those are my two goals. That's what drives me to get more money put into more buckets um, is long-term and really short-term, being able to go on that trip, being able to have that little vacation for us. Um, so we got our goals. Now to break it down, huge way to save, if you could, if you're a two-income family, is that you live on one income and you completely save the second one. That's a big marker. It's not attainable. If you haven't been doing it, you're gonna have to work your way into it. Um, but it is something to look to look like as a future goal. Could we do this? One thing to encourage you, do not forget about all of the tax incentive savings accounts that are out there. Now, I know we can go into retirement. We've done that before. But if, if you are using all of the tax incentives that are there to put money into retirement, to put money into a HSA, which is a health savings account, uh, to you could kind of for college accounts, uh, it's not a huge tax incentive with those accounts, but if you're t definitely taking advantage of your HSA, maybe even an FSA, which is the flexible spending account, all of those are lowering your taxable income and thereby lowering your taxes. So I may save $2,000 in an HSA, but it doesn't feel like $2,000 because I just reduced the amount of taxes that I pay at the same time. So definitely fully taking advantage of those because your dollar for dollar doesn't feel exactly the same. You've got a little bit more back because you chose to save in those avenues. So, you know, just throw that out there. If you feel like saving isn't an option, that potentially could be one, uh, you know, and a whole nother side to that, like opening up cans of worms here possibly, uh, is that the more money you can put into those pre-tax accounts, uh, it could also be opening up the, op the opportunity for you to have, uh, you know, uh, Obamacare insurance uh, and, and qualifying for subsidies that you wouldn't have qualified before before. So, I mean, definitely considering all of those things. Now, let's dive in um, on various ways to increase the savings so that it doesn't feel quite as painful. Uh, and now I pulled a number of folks that um, helped me out on the site and uh, other readers. And the first one, I thought this was really funny uh, for me, and I'll just explain why in a second, but was to stop buying paper plates and paper cups and any disposable items, uh, that that would become a big savings. And if that is you and you feel like you can do it, great. Now, I'm gonna just tell you here, I'm, I, put, I left it as number one because it was the number one thing that I heard from folks. And yes, anything disposable, is just an added cost. Use your plates, use your forks, wash them. That's not a, an additional cost in your budget. Uh, for me, that is my happiness. So anyone that has a big family, you probably live in the same boat that we do, um, but paper plates are just part of how I survive. Um, a, a, a regular day in our household or else I would run the dishwasher or be washing dishes all day long. So I'm gonna leave that one for anyone that's brave enough to tackle it um, for me. I gotta, I gotta hold on to that one, but I thought it was a fun one to start with because in reality, this list isn't gonna work for everybody. We're all different, but your goal is just to find things that you can handle, uh, and that one for me. Mm, I'm just not there yet. Maybe when a few more kids leave the house, but not yet. Okay, number two on the list, just as a big tip, is um, for anyone that is homeschooling, is pondering homeschooling, or is even just your public schooling, but you're gonna look at getting some things on the side to help uh, tutor or encourage your kids. This is your time to do it. And so really along those lines, a lot of folks were mentioning homeschool curriculum, buying them now because this is when sales are, but let's just tie that in in general to realizing that every item you buy, not even groceries here, every item you buy has a key time to buy it. And so if you are itching to get you know, a new ladder, happens to be on sale right now, or uh, you know, a new grill, realizing, can we hold out? Can we wait until that item is its lowest price? Odds are you can. Now, it doesn't always line up. Our refrigerator died about a month and a half ago. 
I have to have a refrigerator. So no, we can't line that up with a Memorial Day appliance sale, which believe me, I would have loved to have tried. Um, but if I can, if I'm in control of that purchase, buying it at the right time is a huge way to save on every purchase that you're making. So if we've got that big ticket item that we're not just running out and grabbing it right now, we're waiting for the best time to grab it. We're gonna try to make, you know, we're still limping along in our dishwasher. We're gonna make that dishwasher last until it, you know, either it no longer does or hopefully gets us to those Memorial Day appliance sales or whatever it is that you're looking for. So. Uh, that one came up along in homeschool curriculum because by the way, yes, this is the time to buy it. Spring is when everybody is planning next year. So if I'm looking for those school supplies, we aren't there yet, like pencils, pens, all of that, that, that starts in July. But all the big things where you're planning and you're planning ahead, now is your time to plan. Um, so learning all of those things, this is actually probably the number one question that I get in Facebook messages is, hey Jenny, when is the best time to grab this? When, I don't mind those. Ask away. I'm like a little encyclopedia of when things go on sale and I am glad to share if I happen to know that particular item, glad to help you figure out, uh, can you hold off until that moment? And sometimes the answer is really hard. You may not want to hear that you just missed the big sales on laptops. For anyone in August, you waited too long. You know, it's, it's July. You want to grab a laptop in July, but learning those things, huge ways to save on your budget. Um, Along those lines, uh, another big tip is knowing what is a want and what is a need. And this becomes big with big ticket items. So one advice that we got when we first got married was having a, a piece of paper, pinning it to the back of your bedroom door. And if there's something that you want, not a need, but you want, it goes on the list. Uh, after 30 days, if you're both in agreement, then we look at seeing, can we afford this item? Can we go ahead and grab it? But it has to stay on the list for 30 days because wants, they are not needs, they are not a immediate, I must purchase this tomorrow. Uh, and so that's kind of requiring for you to have a hold up there. I'm not just gonna immediately grab this because I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna hold off. Now, uh, you don't need to do that with every single item. What, I, what most folks recommend is that you actually kind of come up with a, a price that if it's over this amount, it has to go on the list. If it's under this amount, then you know you use some wisdom and you decide do you really have to have it or not, but you're on your own for that one. You know, I don't want to make everybody have to sit there and have a family discussion over $5. You can decide what that amount is that we're now going to have to agree on it and it's going to have to sit on the list for 30 days to avoid those impulse buys. That's really what you're doing. We spend a lot of money on impulse buys uh, and in reality, so much of that is related to uh, your mental health. Uh, you know, the more lonely that you are, I, I don't even want to know how much people spent on Amazon in the last year uh, while we're not only buying our groceries from there, but impulse buys as well, because they make us feel better. We're excited about hitting that, that buy now button. Uh, we're excited when we get the shipping notifications, all of these things, they know that they excite you. That is why they send them. Uh, they don't just send you a shipping notification just to be helpful. They know that it immediately like gives you this little euphoria moment because something is coming. Uh, the same when you see that UPS truck drive down the street and you're just hoping that it's coming to your house. Same moment. So having that stand back away from those impulse buys, finding something else that you know makes your moment happy that isn't shopping online um, might be something good for all of us, I think. Um, so you know, just to help out a little. Um, and uh, oh, and Anna, I see your question now. So after Memorial Day, when will be the next time to buy appliances? You're gonna redo your kitchen, but won't be ready on Memorial Day. So two tips there for you, Anna. Actually, you potentially could buy your appliances over Memorial Day. You do not have to have delivery. Most places will actually let you buy up to 90 days out and you could give them that really far out delivery day and then call and extend it. They are not gonna care. Um, so I know a, a number of folks that have bought their appliances for new homes or for uh, renovations a far, far in advance than they were needed. So you could potentially shop on Memorial Day or it's any patriotic holiday. So Memorial Day, July 4th, Labor Day um, fits in that mold. Uh, those are your key ones, Veterans Day. That's when they would say for most large appliances and other big household purchases like furniture and other things too. Um, Okay, so 
We've got our list, we've got our needs and our wants. Remember a need is only something that feeds you, clothes you, or houses you. And if it isn't between those three, it isn't a need. Cable, <laughs> just gonna say it, not a need. It's not, um, so hitting some of those. Um, now, let's talk another way to save here too. And this is little, this doesn't feel big, but it does end up saving you a chunk. Guys, that's meal planning. We've done entire nights on how to meal plan too on the Q&A. But just to hit that one, uh, going into the grocery store with a plan, with a list, you know, you're using your Southern Savers list, what's on sale, or if you're not gonna coupon, you're not gonna shop on the sales, at least a base, having a plan of exactly what you need, not going over, that's what a meal plan's helping you do, is I know what I'm gonna put, what I'm gonna cook this week, I know exactly what I have and what I need for those items, and I'm going to aim to do that now. I hate using the word need on grocery shopping because in all honesty, to save the most money on your groceries, you do not wanna buy what you need. You only wanna buy what's on sale. Uh, that's you know just couponing 101 there. We do wanna follow the sales that are in the grocery store. So two things that can help you here. Um, one, for my Publix and my Kroger people especially, if you have not seen it, we actually do a weekly meal plan based on uh, those ads. So if you head to Southern Savers, I already pulled this one up. I also give you a free month long meal plan that you can uh, click on, you can download, you can print. Each of these um, recipes are clickable. So you can click on the actual recipe and get what you need too. You can print this, make it super easy on yourself. Uh, my internet's kind of slow, so hopefully I didn't just kill myself in clicking that. But if you want to find the weekly meal plans for the grocery stores, hover over Kroger, and in this little pop-up box right here, at the bottom option is meal plans. Uh, the same for Publix, meal plans. So uh, take advantage of those. They're free, guys. A weekly meal plan, it is designed to go with what is on sale in that ad. So use the dates that are at the top of the meal plan. Uh, the new Publix meal plan, for example, already up for the ad that starts on Wednesday or Thursday for my folks in Florida. Uh, do you have to follow that every time? Not necessarily. If you truly shop the way that I would recommend you shop, uh, and you can go find our couponing video for that or ask away on questions, uh, really you're gonna have a pantry that is pretty stocked and you can just meal plan from your pantry. But if you're just getting started or you don't want a coupon, I just, I'm fine with following this week's sales, but I don't wanna think about beyond that, then that is where that week-long meal plan completely designed to go with this week's sales is gonna be a big help for you. Anything that you can do to cut your grocery budget is a big help. And for us, you know, just backstory, grocery budget is probably the biggest impact that we had. Uh, when I first started couponing, we were spending almost $1,000 a month for a family of four, and we had two little people at the time, really little, they didn't even eat much, so it was really a family of two. Uh, and we managed to cut that in half and take our budget from $1,000 to $500, and now we're a family of seven, and we're still hovering between 500 and maybe 650 on a big month um, for seven people. That's huge for the month. Um, that didn't happen overnight, but it was for us a massive, whoo, $500 windfall in our account. Now, we weren't making ends meet at the time, so it was $500 that then helped to make ends meet. Um, and you keep going from there. You know, you find one thing that's working, and then you build on that, and you keep, keep saving beyond that. Um, to where now people just laugh when I'm like, no, I, this is totally goodwill or it's eBay, you know, um, I, I'm paying full price. That's just a crazy concept. Um, but it didn't start out that way for us. So you have to start somewhere and groceries was definitely where we started to try to make the biggest impact that we could in our budget. Um, so beyond that, another one in the kitchen, your meal planning, hopefully, um, and the next step, the, a big one for us anyway, is to always plan to cook extra. And I know that seems like a waste, but what you're really doing is you're setting yourself up for easy lunches, for easy leftover dinner, as long as you're in the habit of every time we cook, we cook extra, and we always go to those extras for the next meal, for that lunch, for an easy leftover night. We don't throw them away. Now, if you find that you're throwing them away, you need to stop cooking extra. But for us, that is how we handle lunches. I actually um, had Carrie was sent me a message earlier this week and saying, Jenny, you know, do you meal plan for breakfast and lunch? And can I have them if you do? 
No, I don't. We have about, you know, maybe five different choices for breakfast. Everybody knows what those are. They don't really change. Breakfast is on your own. And lunch in our house is also on your own. We're, we homeschool, we're here all day long. So lunch is always happening right here. But lunch is based off of leftovers in the fridge from what we cooked on previous nights, maybe making your own sandwich or grabbing a can of soup. Those are kind of your three options. If you don't like them, I guess you skip lunch. Uh, but it is on your own in our house. So my youngest is five. She is still capable of finding her own lunch. Uh, and she does get told from time to time, like, uh-uh, that does not count as lunch. You need to restart over. Because if she had her choice, she would have um, cinnamon and sugar toast. You know, like literally breakfast toast uh, for every meal. Uh, so you do have to stop them every now and then. But it also teaches your kids, what is a meal? What are we looking for? So we have that conversation. You need a protein. You need a veggie. Uh, you need some fruit. This is what we're looking for. And they're on their own to kind of piece that together based on the leftovers. And the little ones tend to kind of follow what the older ones are doing. So if the older ones get out leftover pizza from, uh, we had make your own pizza night a couple nights ago, then that, that's probably what they're going to ask for as well. But that is our breakfast and lunch plan. Lunch specifically being because we cook extra when we cook dinner. And I know that seems hard too in a family of seven that we would cook extra, but you just kind of get used to cooking a big pan of dinner. Uh, it's not very hard after that point to just end up with a little bit extra um, for sure. Okay, um, so hopefully these things will help. Um, Tasha, which grocery store is the main grocery store? Um, so it, it kind of depends on what one is the easiest for you to shop at. So Publix, Kroger, or Ingalls are the three that you mentioned. It really depends on um, what what one you're the most comfortable with. I would encourage you to pick either Publix or Kroger. I wouldn't pick Ingles as a main grocery store. They do have some deals, but nowhere near the deals that we see at Publix or Kroger. So whichever one between those other two that you're comfortable with, that's what I would just make your main store. I tend to be a Publix girl. I don't, I don't often go to Kroger, maybe once every six months. Um, Publix is just it just is what I know. It's also what I grew up with. I grew up in Florida and folks in Florida would be like, a Kroger? What are we doing at Kroger? So, you know, it just goes back to what you're comfortable with. Both stores have great prices and great promotions though in terms of saving money. Okay, um, now moving on out of kind of just general meal planning and cooking, I do want to encourage you to be using your mobile apps. I know a lot of folks where mobile apps just seem overwhelming or you don't really know how to get started with them. So I would encourage you to start with one uh, and probably the best one being Ibotta. Ibotta has hundreds of offers and this isn't a mobile app video. Most of these are actually ones we've done entire videos on, but just not forgetting that they're there. And I know, you know, sometimes you're just in a hurry, you don't think about it, but guys, if you haven't submitted to Ibotta recently, you might be pleasantly surprised uh, because there's a number of receipts now that you do not have to scan barcodes on the backs of items. So you're gonna scan your Publix receipt and it may be a mile long Publix receipt and it's gonna auto match items like Fetch Rewards is doing. Now Ibotta is doing that. So Ibotta also has stores that do not require any receipts to be uploaded. If you're shopping in one of those stores, you should be using your mobile app. They have made it as simple as possible. All you had to do was load the items. Um, so I know that's not really explaining how to use Ibotta. Again, if you head over to our past videos or even to YouTube, I have done lots of videos on how they all work. And I'm really just trying to hit so many things here. Um, but just to kind of, you know, give you a couple ideas with Ibotta, um, one in particular is Nivea this week. Crazy good deals on Nivea products thanks to super high value Ibotta offers on one product. Look at that, $2.35 back on Nivea Shave Gel happens to be a Target gift card deal this week as well, and a money maker. Once I buy three of them uh, at like $3.99 a piece, I get back a $5 gift card, I get back $2.35 off of each one of them, you should be using your mobile apps. Um, now, this can also be money back in your pocket on some freebies too. There are a number of freebies that are in there and hundreds of offers. For my folks that shop in Walmart primarily, this is your way to save. Walmart doesn't have digital coupons. They don't really run sales. You have Ibotta offers. You have paper coupons. So please take advantage of your mobile apps. There are a lot of mobile apps that are out there, but if you're just getting started, Ibotta is probably the best place to start with hundreds and hundreds of offers. Some of the other apps much smaller with you know some of them even like 10 or 15 offers. 
So starting with the big guy, figuring it all out, it's at least gonna save you a lot more money than starting with the little guy and getting one offer back here and one offer back there. It gets kind of discouraging, not saying not to use them, but definitely not when you're first getting started and you're trying to get your head wrapped around it all. It's better to start with the one that feels like it was the most rewarding, which is the biggest of the ones that are there. Uh, and Susan's mentioning, yeah, right now on Ibotta, there's an offer for free Nature's Own bread. And it's good in a ton of stores, Publix, Harris Teeter, Kroger, doesn't matter. You grab a package of nature, Nature's Own bread and you're gonna get back almost the full value in some stores or a money maker in some stores. Nature's Own bread is actually part of the Kroger mega event right now. So yep, you shouldn't miss it. I mean, bread, we don't get a lot of coupons for bread and milk and those are your staples in your household. So um, to not miss it is, is an easy one. Do not forget about your cashback apps. Um, another one, and this was just a, also tips when kind of asking folks uh, what they save the most on. A number of folks said uh, no longer going to craft stores, not even just not buying it, just not even going in. Uh, and I agree, I complete, completely agree with you. I took my, uh, my older girls into Hobby Lobby last week and as we walked out, they were like, it's a money pit because you go in and you just immediately want everything. You definitely immediately want everything when you're 16 and you love to craft. Um, so just not even going in the door because that is not a need. It does not clothe you, feed you, uh, or house you. It is just fun. I'm not trying to kill all the fun, but I do want you to realize where your money runs to when you may not be thinking about it. Um, so that craft store is probably a, a big one for a chunk of us. Um, so back to groceries on the next one uh, is meat using up what you have. So eating from your freezer, eating from your pantry. I would encourage a lot of folks to do this once a month. Uh, and I've mentioned this in the past, but you may not realize that every month, the last week of the month is usually the worst week for grocery sales and deals. They kind of have a mentality that if you are paid on a monthly basis, that you're paid on that last day of the month or you're paid on the 15th and the 30th. And so by the time that last day of the month comes around, you don't really have any money that last week of the month being the tightest week of the whole month. So there aren't a lot of brands that actually want to be promoted that week. They know that sales are gonna be slower and they would prefer to be promoted when you just got paid. So that last week of the month, there I'm not saying there aren't deals, but it's just not as abundant as other weeks of the month, like the first week of the month tends to be. So if I'm gonna pick a week that I'm not gonna go grocery shopping, or maybe I'm just gonna stop and get milk, that's your best week. And if you did that every month, Every month for the last week of the month, we did not go grocery shopping and we ate from the freezer or the pantry, you would see a considerable savings uh, on your grocery budget and your overall household budget. You know, think about how much you spend every time you go in the grocery store. For me, I go once a week and I buy groceries for our whole family. It's easily 75 to sometimes $100, depends on how, how great the deals are. Well, that's an easy $100 savings. You know, if it was a big, you know, if I did go and just blow all of the money, uh, just because I didn't go at all. So eat from the pantry, eat from the freezer once a month for a week. Now I'm not telling you to do it for the whole month, just one week, make do with what you have on hand. And it may not mean amazing meals, uh, definitely not if you don't have a great pantry, but it is gonna mean a considerable savings in your grocery budget that you've just wiped off a whole week uh, in spending. Okay, um, I, I love all the deals that y'all are sharing that you've gotten on the mobile apps. Um, and Teresa, I don't think, I don't know what Pace is. I'll have, uh, maybe share a little bit more. It, is it an app? I'm not sure, I haven't heard of that one yet, but I will gladly look into it um, if it's one that y'all are interested in. Um, okay, so a few more here. Um, let's skip the drive-through completely. So when you're meal planning, meal plan down to even the nights that you have somewhere to be, uh, no drive-throughs, those add up. Even if you're just hitting McDonald's, that's still 10, 15 bucks that you just spent that had we eaten a sandwich at home or even a sandwich in the car, we would now have that 10 or 15 bucks in our pocket. And this is where folks tend to be like, eh, it's 10 or 15 bucks. Yes, it is a very small amount, but it's that once a week that is not a small amount. So, and that becomes our problem. We tend to look at those little tiny purchases and we're not really that concerned about them, but we forget that we do this every week. 
um, or we do this every other week, and those significantly add up. Now, if you have to eat out, then let's go deal hunting. Almost every fast food store out there has a mobile app, and almost all of the mobile apps offer some sort of freebie when you first sign up, uh, or some sort of discounts or rewards or coupons inside their app, even McDonald's. Uh, so if that's where you're headed, open up the app, log in, use, I, I, I actually opened up the app today to see what they had, uh, and I wanna say, if you order through, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it just so I don't tell you wrong, if I order through the app and I pay online, I can get an easy $3 off any $15 purchase. All I had to do was order through the app and pick up at the store or pay with the app to get that one. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, right below it is a $2 off any $10 purchase. That's 20%, guys. They're giving you 20% off of your purchase just because you used a coupon in their mobile app. So if you are gonna eat out, find a deal on it is definitely the way to go. For me, uh, if we are gonna eat out, this is also where my cash back apps actually come in handy. So Fetch, for example, I'll redeem Fetch points for a gift card uh, to handle eating out. Uh, my husband and I had date night last week. This is a perk of having teenage older kids uh, or a grandma that lives in town. So we had date night last week. We went to Chili's and handled it with a gift card from a cash back app. So, you know, another perk for getting your grocery deals, you can get that money back in your checking account for sure or PayPal, but sometimes you're just kind of like pre-saving for date night. So it didn't have to come out of the budget as well. It was just covered by a gift card. You know, just throwing it out there as ideas to help. Uh, and date nights to us are uh, a requirement. It's not a, if we have the extra money, it's a, we will make this work. We enjoy time where the kids stay home uh, and we don't. Um, but if you are not able to do that, then I would encourage you to do something else. Because to me, date night is it's important for every marriage. So if this is not in the budget, then what I would encourage you to do is look around at the friends that you have that maybe have kids the same age and do a swap. And so I'm, I, I don't want them to come over and watch your kids. What I want you to do is send your kids to them. So my kids are out and we can have date night in. We can cook our own meal. It's still time without kids. It's still one-on-one -on -one time. Have date night in. You don't have to fix any food. I don't have to do anything and spend a ton of money here. I am going to do all the cooking so we're not eating out, in other words. Uh, and my kids are handled at their house and then next week we'll handle their kids. You know, that is about as cheap as you can get for date night, but it can still happen. So lots of ways here that you can cut the budget in little tiny marks, but those little tiny marks are adding up. And if you think about it, wow, every two weeks we get a date night and we didn't have to spend any money for it, that would be pretty sweet. Your only ultimate expense is when you watch their kids that you've got to feed their kids, or maybe you send your kids having already eaten. You know, all figure that out. But it still became a pretty big savings uh, and you still got some time alone. Uh, marriage is important here. Uh, so focusing on that one without spending a lot of money. Um, and, oh, getting lots of other ideas. Oh, I love it. Um, you always get the $1 fries through McDonald's. Exactly, we've got, if we have a coupon for it, let's get them. Um, and Carl, I completely agree. I love that you've said this. Carl says, small amounts add up fast. I have walked away from a deal over 25 cents before. I think that's important. And I honestly think, Carl, I run into a lot of folks who, who say, you know what, I started couponing, but I spend just as much money as I did before I was couponing. They get a lot more stuff. That's usually their next sentence. Well, here's your problem. You still need to live off of a budget. And when the budget is met, the budget is met. It doesn't matter if the deal costs 50 cents. If you don't have the money for it, that 50 cents adds up. And I think a lot of folks lose track of that. They think it's such the, a small, tiny amount that they just keep adding them to the cart. But you have, you have to have a grocery budget. You have to have a point where you say no. Uh, and I think a lot of us forget that, definitely when we first start couponing. So I love that you've mentioned that um, because they do add up all those little 25 cents. They become $5 really quickly uh, and that just keeps growing too. So having some sort of point where you're done um, is huge. Uh, oh, and Desiree, I, your question is great too. Has anyone had success with using coupons for grocery ordering and for pickup? 
So there are ways to save. Ibotta, the app that I mentioned earlier, that works with Walmart online pickup, so I can get back all those Ibotta offers um, when I use Walmart online pickup. Um, so just to pull that back up, if you click, if you're inside Ibotta, let me click on the home. Sorry guys, I didn't um, hook up my phone. But across the top, you'll see all your stores and you can just sit here and scroll through them. And you'll actually see two Walmarts, a blue Walmart and a white Walmart at some point. I don't shop at Walmart very often, so I think it knows that and it's stuck it way back here in the back. Oh, it didn't even put it there because I don't shop there very often, but you will. You will see a blue Walmart and a white Walmart and the blue Walmart below it says in store and the white Walmart says uh, online. Most of the offers are identical, but that way you've technically checked out the correct way. You link your Walmart account and they automatically give you the cash back that you've loaded. You do have to click the little plus sign uh, and you're, you're kind of good to go. You're gonna get all of that money um, without having to do a lot of work. So the other one, Desiree, uh, is Kroger. And Kroger online ordering, you're gonna get all the sales, but you can actually show up to Kroger to pick up your order with a handful of paper coupons. And they will take them back inside, they will re-ring all the coupons and bring you your new receipt. Um, so pretty sweet and you can still get your uh, Ibotta offers. And if you haven't heard of it, just it's on the Kroger list on Southern Savers, but Kroger cash back on top of that. Um, so once we've stacked that, we're like three deep at that point on some offers. You've got a paper coupon, an Ibotta offer, and a Kroger cash back offer all in the same item. Uh, it's kind of fun. So and that's all completely doable with a Kroger pickup order. Um, and if anything, they have way more time slots available than Walmart does. So they kind of win across the board. Okay, um, I'm going down my list and also trying to not miss y'all's questions. Um, so I, I love this one and this one kind of goes along with what Carl's comment was. If money is not lining up, if we need to save some money, we're trying to find extra money to save, the clearance aisle is not your friend. Um, so there are just times that you need to say no to clearance. And my kids will tell you, I'm kind of the worst. We will go into a store, I won't even get a buggy. They're like, oh, we're just here to get a picture of something. Yes, that's my life. Um, or we're just here to get one thing, we're not even gonna buggy. And then I'll see the big clearance sign and be like, oh, hold on, let's just go over here and see really quick. Um, in Target, you know, how many of us have memorized where the clearance sections are? Um, I actually, on date night last week, drugged my husband all over Target um, for the various clearance endings on purpose. We have a little person here who has a birthday coming up who loves bunnies. So our job in life is to shop all Easter clearance. Um, so we were there you know, to specifically shop clearance. But if we're talking making ends meet, then there's a point where even the clearance deal isn't something that you have to have. So say no. Now we're gonna take a month off from clearance, whatever it might be. Some of us just take a month off from goodwill. You know where your weak points are um, and taking that moment to realize how much you're spending there is kind of big. Um, along those lines too, you could go the other route and let's make some money. Uh, let's clean out the closets. Let's sell the things that we can manage to dig up from the closets, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, We've done entire videos on this too. I actually was thinking we'd do it again here in a few more weeks and selling things online and figuring out what a good price is. Uh, we covered this one last summer, so it's been a little while, uh, but this is a great time of year. It's spring, you know, you're spring cleaning, but it's also a good time when people are looking for new wardrobe items. We're looking for those summer items. If you've got things that have been in your closet since last summer and you realize, you know what, I'm, I don't fit in them or I'm not gonna wear them again, it's time to get them out and to sell them, make some extra money from those items. Um, you could definitely donate them too. I'm not opposed to Goodwill, but anything that has a value, I think you should attempt to sell it first before donating it. See what you can get for it, um, whether it's local or whether it's online through eBay, Poshmark, there are a lot of places to sell. So Poshmark is if you, if you have a lot of high-end items, it's a good way to get what they're worth um, versus sometimes Facebook Marketplace, you're not necessarily gonna get that um, but anytime you can sell or buy used on things you need, you're going to get a deal over buying brand new or just donating those items. So don't forget about that for sure. Um, uh, and, uh, oh, Karen, I love it. So Karen says, don't forget about points. So she charges big ticket items uh, just to get points on her visa. 
and then pays it off online immediately. And Karen, I 100% agree. That's exactly how we live. We don't even use a debit card. We just use the credit card and pay it off at the end of the month because those points are my vacation fund, which I told you in the beginning, that's my goal is to get to go somewhere. Uh, it doesn't always mean that I get to go on a plane, uh, but it, I got those points to where we could. Um, I know some of you have been around for a while on our Q and A's, but a couple of years ago, my husband and I, just the two of us went to Scotland for a week on points. We paid with points for our hotels. We paid with points for our rental car that we drove around for a week. We paid for points for our airline tickets. Literally spent like less than 500 bucks to go to Scotland for two people for a week. So it pays as long as you pay that credit card off at the end of the month. If you carry any sort of balance, you have lost all of your savings. Um, so it does depend on how dedicated you are and if you know that that is not in your personality, you've got a bad history with credit cards, this isn't for you. But for those of us who this is how you handle it, then great. This is what you should do uh, is getting that rewards card and using it for everything. I love that tip, Karen. Um, definitely one of my favorites on getting my vacation every year. Um, oh, and let's see. So, and Linda says she used to, she uses and sells makeup. Um, so you haven't had to buy any recently, which is great. Um, okay. Um, is there a certain time to buy an Instapot and are there any deals for them? So Paige, uh, you know, we see some of those deals strangely enough over Mother's Day. So we're kind of coming up. You might find some good sales. If you're wanting a name brand one, I would wait for Mother's Day. If you're okay with an off brand, um, we regularly see them on the today only deals on Best Buy for their Insignia or their Bella brands. Uh, and we've seen the Insignia ones for as low as like 29 bucks. Uh, it's up to you whether you want name brand or you're okay with a house brand. Uh, but name brand, if you are wanting that, Mother's Day weekend is your go-to. We'll see them in a lot of ads. I think it's kind of funny. I mean, yes, I guess women like small appliances, but I don't know that that's like what they're itching for all the time for Mother's Day, but that is what the ad will have all over it. Um, oh, so Stacy, is there any way to search Kroger cash back? So there is if you search it from Kroger's website. There is not in the Kroger app. They've not really made it very mobile friendly, but from Kroger's website, you do have the ability to find what you're needing. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to get you there in the fastest way that I can. Um, I was gonna show you on the website and even for me, it's now not pulling up right away. Um, so let's go here and see what we can get. Um, maybe we'll just search cash back. They used to have it in their menu list and it's not even showing up for me there. Um, oh, well, we're gonna give up here, but in terms of Kroger, and it may be because I have the, the page shrink down, but usually if you go to menu, uh, it'll be under savings and then cash back will be listed there. And it's gonna look just like the digital coupons look, which I can get to from the top. Um, so from the digital coupon side, you're able to search specifically for the brand that you need here. Uh, and you'll have that same option on the cash back. You will not be able to find that in their app though. So. Um, just as a warning, like in their app, you can scan the barcode and it will pull up any digital coupons for that item in the store, uh, but it will not pull up cash back for that item. So just as a warning that you aren't actually seeing all of your offers when you're in Kroger for those items. Um, okay. Um, to keep moving, uh, we've hit a lot here. One big one, let's talk entertainment for a second. Uh, again, it isn't a need, it is a want. And I know mentally that some of us do, we need an outlet, I get that. But there are still ways to find that outlet free or to have some limits as to how much you're willing to spend. So first off, let's talk books and audiobooks, um, podcasts, all of those. Uh, there's really no need to purchase most books. Now, brand new book, you may not be able to find it as quickly as you wanna read it but you need to head to your public library uh, and at least get a library card. I don't even need you to use it in the library, but you need the library card because most public libraries are part of online collections, uh, meaning I don't have to check it out from the library. I am gonna read this book entirely on my phone or a tablet or even my computer if I wanted to, 
Uh, some of those programs are Hoopla. That's a, a, a great one. I use it all the time. Uh, Hoop, like H-O-O-P-L-A, or Overdrive is the other one. My kids are always on Overdrive, my teenagers anyway. You have to have a library card though to be able to get in. Not every library is part of every system, but uh, most of them are now. Before last year, some of them weren't. I would bet 99% are at this point. And you're talking free books. Now, if it's a brand new release, you're gonna basically put a hold on it and you're gonna have to wait until that book becomes available. They have two or three copies basically that your library is technically paid for. So when it becomes available, you'll get an email and you can read it in your app. With Hoopla, that's not how it works. You can see everything that's there and you just check it out right then. But we're talking audiobooks, we're talking regular books, uh, there's even music in there, and there's a lot that you get access to for no cost. So you should be taking advantage of those before you're buying the Kindle version uh, or buying the book in general, getting the free version. If you love it and you wanna own it, great. Uh, but this way you got, you got a free glimpse. You didn't have to pay a dime. You got to read the book or part of the book and then you could decide to buy it if you really wanted to. But most of us, uh, how many times do we even go back and reread a book? We don't tend to do that. We go on and reread more. Uh, I know that it's not the same as having the book in your hand, check the book out from the library if that's what you need. But having a no spend on books, on audiobooks, is pretty huge. Uh, if you need more audiobooks and you really want access to everything that's out there, uh, I do know right now uh, Amazon is running a 30-day trial of Audible, um, but you're still gonna end up paying upwards of $15 a month um, to have access to those audiobooks and you still have to end up buying a lot of them. Like, wait a second, we don't wanna go there. We want the free versions of these. So library card so that you can have access to all of those digital op offers. Um, the other thing to realize is how much you can actually stream for free. So I get a lot of folks that were ready to cut cable. I love it. We should have cut cable five years ago for those of you who haven't, just to tell you, sorry, but it's true. Uh, there are a lot of options for you to stream online, live sports. You're not gonna miss any of your favorite shows. You're gonna be able to see them all. But the problem is, is that all of those add up. And again, they're small. And so we don't think of them. But I would encourage you to sit down and figure out how much do we pay a month for streaming? I think you're gonna find it's in the $25 or more category for a lot of houses because we don't even think about the little $5 here and the $7 there. So what I would encourage you is maybe you pick two. We're gonna have two programs at a time. Uh, beyond those two, we're gonna cancel the others. None of them have contracts. Uh, so grabbing those two, watching what you wanna watch for a few months, and then getting a different one if you want to. Uh, now that's tricky when you're gonna go Amazon Prime, if Prime is one of yours, because you do get a better deal to buy that all year long. For us, Prime is one of ours. And then we have actually two others. We have Disney Plus, um, ESPN Hulu because we don't pay for this. Uh, we wouldn't have it if we had to pay for it, but our Verizon plan actually offers all three of those for free. So you do wanna check and see if you're eligible for any of those. Um, you know, It does require an unlimited plan, which you may not need, so I'm not asking you to go sign up for more money at Verizon just to get free Disney Plus. But for us and the amount of data that I use just for sharing deals um, when the internet goes out around here, I get Disney Plus for it in the end. Uh, we also have BritBox. And this one we have because my mother gave it to us as a Christmas gift. So a huge way for you. I mean, how many of us as adults, someone asks you what you want for Christmas and you can't really think of anything? Knock out one of your streaming platforms. Uh, now we're not paying for this every month. Now we didn't have it beforehand. We actually knew that we wanted it. So we reached out and said, this is what you could get us for Christmas. Um, and this is what we primarily watch now is BritBox all the time. Um, and we just really like British mysteries. That's our big thing. Uh, so obviously, you know, if you don't, don't get that one. But thinking of things that in a way are bills, but are bills that people don't mind paying. Those are great things to ask for birthdays and for Christmas. No one's gonna really, you know what? I would really love a Netflix gift card if that's what you want. You don't even have to get them to pay for the whole year. Just. I'd love a Netflix gift card for my birthday. They might look at you a little funny, but they just paid, you know, if they give you a $25 gift card, they just paid for a couple of months of Netflix for you. It's a bill, but it's a bill now that you don't have to pay and they're providing you with some entertainment. So it's something that they're willing to spend and it's a great way to knock off an expense um, and, and let someone else handle it. 
And if anything, you've given them a birthday idea and that makes them happy too because people do not like having to get creative, um, but at least they've given you something that you want. Um, so if you can't narrow it down yourself that you are um, you know, trying to figure out ways that we can still get all of our things without having to spend all of the money that we're, we're spending to watch all of those. Um, so another one, and I just saw my husband leave this in the comments too, is Pluto TV. Uh, we watch a lot of Pluto TV. So if you've not looked into that one, it is completely free. It's available on your Roku. It's available on most of your streaming devices. Uh, it does have commercials, but it has a ton of channels and so most of them are devoted. So there is an Antiques Roadshow channel. Uh, there's a channel that I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it plays Flipper all day long, but my kids would, every time they want to watch Flipper, Flipper is on. So maybe it is the Flipper channel. Um, you know, we're going 1980s here, but there's literally a channel for what feels like everything lately. The channel that they've been watching the most is The Price is Right, um, which is very humorous to go back and watch 30 years later. Uh, and I wish that it, I, it was still around because I'm pretty sure I could, I could win it if they would just let me on it. Um, so Pluto completely free with a lot of commercials, but it's like normal TV. And actually that's what one of my teenagers said is I love Pluto because I feel like it's normal TV. Like you don't even know what normal TV is. You've never had that concept, but I guess in her mind, she felt like that was, that was it. And she was happy to be watching it. Um, oh, and my husband just corrected me. How about 1960s TV? Yes, definitely. Uh, on the flipper and, uh, even the price is right. Probably some of them are super old. Um, so in that with technology, if you can't, you know, cut all the way, I'm not saying you have to go only to Pluto is trying to keep one, maybe two max setting a budget for yourself. And when that budget is met, we don't add any more streaming channels in, uh, because again, this is a want, it is not a need. Uh, and there are other ways that you can save when it comes to streaming. Uh, some of them maybe not above board. I don't know what everybody's policy is, but, um, YouTube TV, for example, you can technically share with family members. So you can, you know, make that how you want that to look. Uh, if you're looking to get live sports, YouTube TV, Sling, those are your best options for getting the most number of channels. Um, so finding a way to save on those items is always key uh, if you can. Okay. Uh, one last one before you, um, <laughs> Wendy, thank you. I think I would kill it on the prizes, right? Every time I watch it with the kids, I'm trying my hardest to win that person the boat that you now obviously it happened 40 years ago. So my advice uh, isn't going to help them much at this point, but I would love to go on that show. Uh, so one last one here, as we talk about all these various tips and you guys have sh shared some great ones, um, in terms of saving this little bit, I would encourage you to set up a, an account somewhere and have the savings automatically go in. So the biggest tip I can give you that most financial planners would give you is that you pay yourself first. So go ahead in the next month, do what you can do, whittle down little things, figure out, you know, how much could we put in savings that wouldn't be incredibly painful. I'm not asking you to go and have like a billion arguments over money because you put $600 in savings and you couldn't afford that. Start little if that's what you want to do. Uh, my favorite, I've shared this a lot, is Acorns. Um, I actually, we, I just shared a comment on Instagram or a picture on Instagram over the weekend of imagine if you put $100 a month into an account uh, at 6% interest that you would have over like $5,000 in the course of just you know, five to 10 years. And the first person that commented was, where in the world are you gonna get 6%? It exists, guys. We're not talking your savings account in your local bank though. You're going to need to put this into investments. And Acorns is a really, really safe way to do that. Now, it's still investments. There are still risks. There's risks with any time you're gonna, gonna get into stocks. But with Acorns, you're not going out and buying a share of Ford or a share of Home Depot. Um, you're buying into mutual funds and probably some ETFs and they handle it all. Uh, for me, and I showed you guys this just a couple of weeks ago, but our Acorns account, we've had it for almost a year now. Um, and it's, I, I, I think we're at $900 now in that account. I have it automated, just tiny, $10 a week. That is what is automated to go straight into our Acorns account off the top, just $10 a week. You could set that to any amount that you're willing to do. Uh, I do try to get a little extra in there, um, but that isn't like for me, well, you know, one of my goals is retirement. So that's really where I try to put most of our extra money. 
but this is just a little tiny you know extra spending account we also use it to pay for some bigger bills that happen once a year or twice a year but that account over the last year has continued to earn right now it's actually i looked this morning at a nine percent rate that is what we've earned on our money nine percent your local savings account not going to do that um, so find somewhere it doesn't have to be acorns but this is just the one that i use um, you know it's easy to talk about what you're comfortable with so this is one that i use acorns does have a cost it has a cost of three dollars a month um, i just have their basic version uh, but in that three dollars we've made uh, you know almost 87 in interest this this year um, so we've definitely made back the three dollars a month in the cost of having the acorns account you can put even more in there you know this is up to you so this is just one option i did just i gave my husband the link um, for our account so if you want to use that invite link you'll get five dollars put into your account as soon as you open it and you fund it um, you know, so your first month, really your um, first month and a half or free, if you want to try out Acorns, you link it to your bank. They do roundups as well, um, which I think right now is turned off. I need to turn it back on. It got unlinked somehow for our bank account. Um, but we just automated payments, set those up, figure out what's comfortable. And then next month after you've made some adjustments and you've cut little things here and cut little things there, then we increase that amount, set a goal at the end of the year. I want to have this much in our acorns account i would encourage you not to set your goal with that interest rate by the way because you know you're not in control of that side you set your goal based on what you're in control of um, but in the end you've made some extra money on it that you would not have made had it just sat in your bank because your bank is paying you nothing so if i want to actually get my money earning money i got to go somewhere else um, and acorns is a great one betterment is another one if you want another option that's out there um, both of them do have a little monthly fee, but will let you buy into mutual funds and you don't have to do any work. They will do all of that for you uh, and you just get to reap the benefits. So totally worth it um, for sure. Okay, and Carl's walking us through um, how to find the Kroger cash back. So go to menu and then click digital uh, near the upper left and then scroll to the bottom of the page for Kroger cash back. Um, so let's go all the way to the bottom. Oh. Um, I might be missing it there. Um, I don't know. I'm still not seeing it, Carl. Uh, really, my mother could walk me through this too because she's the one that puts them all in the database. Um, but it kind of showing you guys that I don't shop at Kroger that often anymore. I really am a Publix girl. Uh, and in all honesty, if you're just getting started in the grocery world, I wouldn't encourage you to go to every grocery store in town. Everyone has the general same price on sale with a coupon. Uh, that you're going to get everywhere. There's no need to, to drive yourself crazy driving all over town. So uh, I have always tried to live by that. We go to one grocery store a week and that is where we get all of our items from. Um, and I would encourage you to do the same. So kind of showing off that I can't, I can't find Kruger Cash back here live and probably the minute I get offline, I'm going to find it um, without a problem. But it's just funny that it, it's being a little um, devious here and, and not being quick and easy for me. Um, Oh, and I love it. So um, Paige says she's got $30 a month that goes into a bank account at another bank um, that she has to physically go and actually withdraw the money on. And that is a huge one. So if you're not going to go acorns, if you're going to do something else, having your savings somewhere else is a really big way to keep yourself from um, spending money that you shouldn't be spending. So uh, it's going to make it a little bit harder to get access to your savings. We've used online money market accounts for ages with Capital One. Uh, and that's where we were kind of putting our amount for monthly bills. We just started to move them so that they were in investments and making a little bit more money this year. But before this year, it was all in those online accounts with Capital One because they take three days to transfer the money back to your account. So I can't have that impulse buy. I can't be in a store and immediately want to buy something. I have to give them three days to get the money back. So that separate bank is a huge way to keep your money safer from yourself um, and make it a little bit harder. Um, oh, Donna, you're great. You'd love to see me do a video with my mom. Um, she's actually here. She humorously, as soon as I said that, she's, she always watches with us. She sent me the link to Kroger Cashback so I could just get there. Guys, this is where you kind of get um, in your own little rut. So just use the database on Southern Savers. Like I don't need to find it. It's in the database and the direct link. So. Um, this is Kroger cash back and all of your options. I'm not currently signed in. If I was, then I could load any of these. Then when you buy the item in Kroger, 
you're gonna earn the cash back and it's gonna sit in your account uh, that you can then use the next time you're in Kroger uh, or get it out. So as you've got lots of options, some of these we actually have Ibotta offers for as well. So a fun way like this uh, Haribo or however you wanna say that, uh, there's a whole bunch of gummy worm items. This is the um, Happy Cola. These are all on sale for a dollar right now. Uh, they're on sale for a dollar next week too, by the way. I already have the new Kroger ad up on Southern Savers. You can look at this week's, next week's. It's the same mega event, but all the produce and meat are different. But these are on sale for a dollar. Well, I have a 50 cent cash back from Kroger and I have a 50 cent Ibotta offer that just made some gummy candy completely free. I know that's not super exciting. It doesn't, you know, make dinner happen. But it is a moment where all of a sudden, you know, you're living a tight budget. You're not saying yes to a lot of things for your kids, but hey, I can bring home some gummy treats every now and then and I can be like fun mom uh, because we found some deals that really lined up and made something super cheap. And my kids love that. When I get home from the grocery store, it really is a, ooh, let's see what mama brought home. Uh, sometimes just yogurt makes them happy. They don't need candy, but you know, it's however the coupons line up and getting the things that they love, but we still got a really good sale on them. Uh, and um, oh, and Jamona, it says it varies by library per their agreement. You're right. So when you're dealing with these online library options, um, and we're in Richland County too, so we're all in the same, uh, using the same library there. Uh, it has a 21 day checkout for up to 10 books. So that is Hoopla's uh, rule and it, it does change. Uh, Overdrive is one where you're going to sometimes only have two weeks to read a book, but Overdrive is where I'm then going to have to wait for the hold. So for anyone on the library side, you really, you want to go to your library first and get the gift or get your library card, but then just see what do they have availability to in the online world, Hoopla and Overdrive being the two largest that are there. You'll actually be surprised what your library gets you access to for other things. My um, teenagers are having to write a research paper for one of their dual enrollment classes uh, and our library card gets us access to a really big database of uh, articles that normally you have to pay. You have to pay upwards of $20 an article, uh, but the library card gets them access to those too. So uh, I'm going at it from the free books and free audiobooks, but this could actually be a very good resource just using your library card when it comes to school for all ages. Um, but for us, for high schoolers, it's been a really good resource because we don't have that access to the you know public school library that would, would be right there on campus, but they can still find lots of things that they need. Um, Okay, and Amy, have I used the Kroger cashback money to pay for another Kroger cashback offer? Um, you've avoided it. So you can use it for anything. It's not, it is just looking to see that you've purchased it. It's not looking necessarily that you've used it or on another offer and you shouldn't have any issues at all in terms of redeeming it there. Um, it's just literally cash in your account uh, to use on anything. So almost treat it like extra care bucks uh, when you're heading into the store, it's just pretend money that you've earned from buying other things and you can redeem to use for other items. Um, okay, so we've hit a lot of things tonight, kind of went through the list, uh, and I had one more for you guys, and this one's a hard one, but when we're really talking saving money, your utility bill is your second largest bill. So groceries is first for most of us, and heating and air, water, uh, whatever's fitting into that, those become our second largest in a lot of households. So it's getting creative for you. Sometimes it's getting a little uncomfortable too. I'm not telling you to, you know, turn the air up to 80, but I would say in these next few weeks while we're in, you know, spring that we try hard to not turn the AC on. If you can handle the pollen, that we open the windows, that we turn on some fans, you know, you take advantage of these shifts in seasons uh, to not use electricity where you may not need to. Uh, for heating and cooling. Heating, sometimes we can sometimes handle being colder more than we can handle being hot. It just depends on which way you go. In our house, we don't handle being hot well. Um, so it's handling your AC and your heat to where it's a slight uncomfortable, but it's saving you a lot of money. Uh, there are a lot of folks that say that changing your, uh, your air by one or two degrees isn't a huge adjustment. I think you'll be surprised when you do make those adjustments long-term Having a thermostat that does have settings that you can preset for a schedule, having a thermostat that I can actually really adjust when you go on vacation that you can control. I'm not saying you need to go buy a Nest. Um, a programmable thermostat starts at like 30 bucks. And on that note, a lot of uh, local electric companies will even offer them for free. So check in with your local electricity company 
and ask for a home energy audit. Most of them do these and most of them, it is completely free. They come out to your house, they assess your drafts, they assess where your weaknesses are for your utility usages, and they will give you some freebies while they're there. Duke Energy wins on this, so anyone that has Duke Energy, I wish we did, no offense to Dominion who just bought our whole power system, but uh, Duke Energy gives you free light bulbs and free shower heads and all sorts of things. You should take advantage of this. It's a freebie. It's a freebie to have them come in and then to kind of gladly accept everything that they'll hand you while they're there. Um, but anything that you can do on your utility bill, you might as well try. It is worth trying. Uh, so at least seeing if it's available in your area um, and what they're willing to do for you. It may not be completely free. It does depend on your area, uh, but hopefully that's something that you can find and get some feedback. What could we change? What could we you know, quickly install here and save some money uh, and just see? Uh, they are gonna probably try to you know, sell you some installation services too, so be ready to say no if you need to, um, but it will definitely uh, be a, an extra little bit that you have in your arsenal to save some more money on all of your bills, not just groceries, but utilities as well to take advantage of those and see what is in there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say we're, we're good. We had a lot of ways to save. We're over on time. Um, we will be back next week, same time always on Monday nights. Uh, and I do think it actually was on the schedule. You guys have asked a lot of questions on it too, but my plan for next week was to talk about um, specifically saving with online groceries. So we did this a year ago uh, and we're gonna hit it again next week. So talking Kroger uh, and Kroger online pickup and Harris Teeter, Walmart, all of those places that allow us to do online orders with online, uh, you know, in-store pickup, home delivery, what all our options are and how to save with each of those stores. So we're gonna hit all of that again. Um, it can be a refresher. Some little things have changed in the last year as well um, for every local store that we can think of. So that is what we're gonna talk about next week. If you've got some folks that love online pickup and they're not saving money, get them to join us. So Monday night at 8.30. Uh, if you've got any questions between now and then, feel free to send me a Facebook message or an email. I'll also be online tomorrow at two uh, to go through all of the top drugstore deals this week. Uh, there are some fun ones this week. Last week was kind of boring and this week is not so boring. So hopefully you can join me for that or catch that after the fact. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you have a great rest of your